Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, clearly today I'm not in my garage. Thank God. We're actually at Phytech headquarters in Southern California. I'm with Jeremy and today's an exciting day because we get to go and dyno tune the GTO now. It's been a long time coming. If you're brand new to the channel, I did a full playlist. Go check up in the corner. Sorry, Jeremy. Up in the corner over there, that little eye, I did a full playlist on how to install a standard throttle body from Phytech. So today, with the help of Jeremy, we're gonna go through some tuning techniques that will help you guys at home because not everyone has access to a dyno. We get that. So we're gonna do some, maybe some ass dyno, uh, you know, tips and tricks, right? Or Yeah, I'll show you how it's done. Yeah, So Th good. So yeah. we'll have some good close-ups of what's going on. Uh, if anything comes up that I'm gonna ask some stupid questions to help you guys out, but I'm looking forward to the power numbers. And then in a later video, we're gonna turn over and convert this to port injected. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't. Let's get going. Look at the green popping in the light. Oh my God, I'm getting excited here. Woo, now we gotta strap this baby down. But I am just drooling over my own piece of work, so sorry guys, let's do this. How's the bigger one, yeah. So Jeremy, what's happening now? Uh, first thing, I'm gonna make a backup of the calibration that's in here before I go connecting it and changing it. Oh, okay. I'm just reading cal from ECU. That'll take the calibration out of the ECU on the throttle body and save it into here. Mm. If you ever need to go backwards, we can refer to this calibration. If you ever need to back it or go back to that, you'd use right cal to ECU, but uh, since that's not what we're doing, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look through, see what's going on, make sure no fault codes. So you're plans. looking for red flags, basically. Make sure, yeah, make sure the tune is not out of whack. You know, 13.6, yeah, that's fine. We're not, we don't have boost on this, so these don't matter. Wide open, wide open throttle in the 12.6, 12.5, even 12.7 or 8 can be okay. I don't like to push it any leaner than that. But especially on a street car, definitely not. On a bigger motor, uh, like these uh, hot running Pontiacs, I might even at the high RPM richen it up just a little just for that extra cooling effect on the exhaust valves. Mm. Excel pump, what have you done? Nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> crank warm up, a little bit of an adjustment. Basically nothing. Idle control, still basically nothing there. Um, in the data logging, I can actually see the fuel learning. Uh, it's pulling a little bit of fuel, adding a little bit of fuel, pulling, adding, adding, pulling, pulling a lot, adding a bit, bit adding, pulling. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to go through and try to tune the VE tables to uh, make sure it doesn't do much learning at all. Hmm. Uh, the way to get to that, in the display setups, turn on Pro. So that just show, you don't have to click OK, that's just a handheld setting. Then, uh, oh, sorry, in Pro Tuning, you can get to these cam fuel tables. Well, actually, on uh, this is a power adder. Uh, so in a power adder, you can get to them through the power adder calibration. Power adder tuning has the cam fuel tables. Uh, you have a 470 cam 3, so I'm going to change things in the cam 3 range. Yeah, this is all correct. The fans, you got them coming on 194 and 183, okay. So cam 3, uh, it's reading all the tables out. It's going to, we can go back and forth between here and the dashboard and kind of add fuel and take out fuel where we need it. Uh, I could do that with a dyno loading 
and uh, watch it correct in real time. Huh. I do have to go through a few setups on the dyno real quick to okay. get the parasitic losses set up and get the RPM calibrated for the RPM pickup so that I can uh, smooth out my power pull uh, RPM yep. without having any glitches. And then, uh, and then I'll get to tuning. Neutral. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. It's just coasting down by itself. And, what uh, gear do we test in? So, because of your gear ratio, I'll probably do a power pull in third, just so I'm not up at like 140 miles an hour <laughs> uh, when I do like a you know max rev. Right. Uh, there will be minor transmission losses when we do the power measurements that way, but it at least keeps the tire speeds and, and the drive shaft speeds. Insanity ranges. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be doing 6,000 in fourth gear very often. So. No, no doubt. Yeah. Just on on ramps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be around 130, 140 if you did that. In fourth really? gear. In fourth gear. Oh, in fourth gear. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you're putting the, you're going to hook up the laptop now. Yeah. So I just plug in the USB cable there. And you this can, software is like. Uh, Phytech software or? I might use the engineering software, but uh, yeah, the Phytech software is the same idea. You just plug it in there, plug it into your laptop, go back here on the handheld. You have to set it up to the, to the right mode. So it's the laptop software connection. This is the engineering version of software. Sorry, you guys don't get to see all these other <laughs> cool things that are, yeah, half of them are disabled. So we're basically going through RPM range. And adjusting the air fuel ratio as we creep up, creep up, creep up. So eventually we're going to do that. Sorry guys. Baselining on the software, and now we're going to get serious. We're setting up fans in front of the car, as you can see, because yes, my spalls aren't that powerful. So it's about to get real. Can I pull the? Oh no, you're in this too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're about to do a pull. We smelled a little bit of fuel, and that's because um, I had to do a preliminary change over the uh, fuel line to prep for the next video. Blah 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 blah. blah a tiny drip right by the fuel filter so we're good um, but now it's time to make a pull right yeah let's we'll see how it does and so got any guesses what you, you said it's 500 on an engine dyno that's in my book should run around 400 at the tires like if it's within 15 of 400 either way I'll be happy well I want to see more than that, Brandon, because it's my car. So yeah. we'll have to see how it goes. Four fifty. Let's do. Uh, if you said it's five, can we sandbag? Can we sandbag the dyno at all? Well, engine dynos are a lot colder. They're running directly. They're not running all the accessories. So don't worry about that. I'll. It, it, <laughs> if I get over uh, four hundred, I'll lift. <laughs> yeah, and this is only stage one. I mean, there's plenty of years of me tinkering and yeah. adding superchargers and blah blah blah. So great benchmark. Let's do this. I'm going to do a couple of pulls just to make sure we got a good smooth average so we can do a comparison later. Okay. That's fair. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> well, we split the difference. Yeah, it's, you it's said more than I expected. Yeah, it's done at 5,000 here, so uh, let me get the full view. So that here. was the peak at five? Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Big, big torque monster here. Yes, sir. 
And I'm gonna do a couple more just to get a good average. Okay. I'll give it a, you know, two minute cool down between poles. Oh, gotcha. Just kind of stabilize things. Yep. Okay, you saw it, run number one, 433. This is gonna be run number two. Come on, internet. There we go. 4:35. Yeah. So right in, right in the same ballpark of. Uh, I can compare that actually. Yeah, the lines overlaid pretty good. Nice. Yes, 4:35. I will take it. I don't remember what was the torque. 501 foot pounds. At the wheels. Now you know why I smile so much when I'm driving the car around. Now there's a lot going on in this video, uh, Jeremy. Your channel, mm -hmm. which I will leave a connection uh, link below, has a ton of tech tips, mm -hmm. right? And you cover that, what we just went through in different pieces, right? Right. Yep. So make sure you head over to Fitech's channel, subscribe to their channel. Make sure if you have a Fitech unit, you go through all those tech tips because it will help you out immensely. But the exciting thing is next episode, we are converting over to port injection. You guys know that have been a part of the channel. I already put that manifold on, but I will go through not only port injection, but how to properly cut AN lines and put fittings on. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't, and you guys know the drill, building fast, driving faster. See ya.